Erich Maria Remarque knew all too well the face of war, having been conscripted into the soon-to-be-defeated German Imperial Army in 1917. When he published All Quiet on the Western Front, therefore, it was not to be a tale of action and adventure, but a reflection on the plight of the ordinary soldier in a world where there are no heroes, only victims. The volume is presented in a plain grey-brown slipcase that has a slightly coarse appearance like the fabric of a field tunic. This lends it a crude utilitarian austerity that makes the book look like it might have been provisioned for supply at the front. The book is bound in beige cloth, though it feels a bit like bookroom, printed with a brown design of a desolate, war-torn landscape. The cover carries the title in a cursive Germanic face called Diva, while the spine bears the title, author's name and the word folio. I found the printing on the cover to be a bit prone to rubbing. My copy has an unsightly scratch to the rear and rubbed corners. To prevent further damage, I now keep it wrapped in a protective mylar dust jacket. The binding is sewn with black and white head and tail bands. The printing and binding took place in Italy, and end papers have a satin finish and are printed with a panoramic photograph of German soldiers during the First World War. The text is set in Palatino, with the well-chosen diva display to add a bit of thematically relevant finesse to the typography. Occasional small printer's ornaments add a further flourish to the design. The translation by Brian Murdoch dates to 1994, while Jeff Dyer's introduction engages sensitively with the themes of conflict and the human condition. The book is printed on off-white, acid-free, abbey-wove paper. It is illustrated with nine black and white photographs of German soldiers, including the frontispiece, which is a photograph of Remarque himself. Each is printed on glossy photographic paper, and the reproduction is both clear and sharp. This book was banned by the Nazis, usually a definite certification of quality. Indeed, while much of the novel has an element of farce, this is no comedy but a masterful polemic on the folly of conflict. I find it to be a powerful and incisive condemnation of war and those on whose behest it is waged, at once both enlightening and moving.